Hello and welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a helpful, friendly vermiculture community, you are in the right place. Today is all about the red wigglers in my stacked system. It has been three weeks since they were fed and I'm hoping to harvest this top layer today. So let's take a look. I have fed this top layer some worm chow and I was hoping that that would help them finish up everything here and possibly put everything into um, a shape where I can harvest it. Now, if you look at these castings, they look fabulous. Look at that. But what I do see is that they have moved some of the paper on top here out um, for whatever reason, and they are not eating it. So I'm gonna put that off to the side because I don't want to uh, mix that back in as I'm harvesting, because that will just mean I have to um, sieve it next time. All right, so now looking at this, I think that this can be harvested. Got a quite a few uh, springtails in here, which I generally see quite a bit more of in the winter for some reason. They must like the cool weather. Put in there below, if you are one of those people that farms um, springtails on purpose. Do they like the cooler temperature? Because this is not overly wet, nor is it overly dry. This is a really good temperature. So I'm not sure what's attracting them to this. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of do a bit of a light harvest. And then once I get down to where the worms are, then we're going to switch over to the aggravation method. But I figured there's, there's no use aggravating them if they're already off of this top layer. And if you remember, any of the uh, harvested layers go on to blue to dry out, so we're not really going to lose any worms, even if they are in the handfuls that I pull out. Alright, I think I'm at the limit of what they've uh, dove down for, so I'm just going to come in here. The layer underneath that was fed last time is still under there, so the worms are, in theory, and has been in practice, they actually do go and uh, crawl down to the next layer down. Now I'm seeing paper in here as well, which might mean that uh, they are not quite done with the paper or the paper is not able to be composted. You just never know. And I'm willing to take that chance but I'm seeing quite a bit of the paper in here, so I am going to vote no to the, um, the harvesting. I'm gonna put that back in. There's just too much paper in there, I just don't think. That's one of the things about worm farms that you, you don't hear a lot of people talk about is you have to kind of go with the flow. I came in here with the idea that I was absolutely going to uh, harvest this time, but when I get into it, it wasn't just that little bit of paper on the top. There's actually quite a bit of paper all over, so I'm going to go ahead and reincorporate that. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time, and I'm going to give them some worm chow, because I don't want to add anything in here that is going to um, add things I'm going to have to sift out. So I'm just going to kind of scratch that in. That wasn't blended up as good as powder, so hopefully that will go quickly anyway, even though it's about the size of uh, granules of sugar. So hopefully that will still get eaten up. All right, so we are not harvesting today. Plans change. But I will show you the diagram of where we are and where we started. So let me move this off and we'll look at the tray we fed pineapple last time. A bit of pineapple and other random kitchen scraps last time. And as I predicted, that pineapple is going to be in here for months and months and months. You can see they're making progress for sure, really good progress in here, but not, you know, obviously gonna get completely finished with a pineapple in just under a month. So I'm just gonna make sure that everything is mixed up here. You can see a lot of paper. So we're just gonna go ahead and feed this layer today with their new food. This pineapple stuff, like I said, is very long-term food. I can put that in the corner 
and when it gets available, made available by the springtails and everything else, then they can go after that again or more. Okay, so now that I've got all that out of the way, I'm going to bring in the food that I'm giving them today. All right, well today what they're going to get is some bananas, some rotten pineapple, and also some apple ends and a little bit of oranges. This is quite a bit of feeding, but there are about five pounds of worms in here. Uh, I know that somebody had mentioned in one of the other worm groups that uh, I do feed quite a bit, but I do that in relationship to how many worms that I have in a worm bin. This is a very established bin with about five pounds of worms. And so my worms can handle this much food, not to mention, if this were to heat up in any way, they can go to a different level to get away from it because there are other layers that are completely comfortable and of a good moisture and have things they can chew on until this becomes available. Now, I think those bananas, as they were fro rotten and frozen, I'm sure those will become very fast food, but uh, the rest of the layers still have the drippings. So as these things decompose, the water will, or the fluid, will leak down into the layers below and make the paper tasty. So then they can just eat the paper. All right, let's look at the uh, layer below this to see what kind of progress it's making. All right, so this layer has never been fed anything at all. It, it was just yield cardboard, uh, dry cardboard at that when I put it in. I'll put the, uh, the diagram up so you can see when this was put in. But you can see this has got a lot of worms in there and it also has uh, quite a bit of castings on my, you can see on my hands. So they are already, you know, working on multiple layers here. All the worms don't just kind of like move as a group to one or the other layer. They kind of run around in between got my little uh, handy dandy risers here. If you go back to my community post, I have a picture of this next to a measuring tape in case you wanted to know how big it is. But this is a uh, one inch PVC pipe and it looks like the worms are enjoying hanging out in there as well. But that's just to distribute the weight of this to make sure that the plastic doesn't bow and whatnot. And I can keep this for longer than I did my DIY one which was only about four years old when it started to break. All right, let's check the next layer down. Okay, I still see worms in here and a lot of springtails. Now this is pretty much completely dry. I almost kind of feel like I want to put some water in here. I know it kind of goes against the whole thing I'm doing, but with it being furnace season, I'm a little concerned that just the drippings from the food might not be enough. So I'm gonna just add a little bit of water there. Uh, there is actually one more layer below. So um, if there's any water that does not uh, get absorbed into this, it can get absorbed into the paper below this. So this is the bottom, bottom layer. And if you can see, there's still some worms that are down here, which again, I know it kind of goes against the whole idea of putting the dry paper down here, but with the furnace being on, with the uh, furnace being on full time, it has been really, really cold around here. Um, I'm just afraid the drip down method is not going to be enough. So just getting it a tad bit wet, hopefully that will help the worms out. Let me go look at the sump and see if I have any worms to return. Just one little lonely worm down there. I'm going to put him in a top layer. Okay, now what I am gonna do is I am going to start the next layer as planned because I did already bring everything down in the basement. So let me get that extra layer that I don't normally use. One of my viewers had a great idea that I needed to put a sheet of paper. I don't have newspaper, but the uh, packing paper will have to be good enough. And they said that if I put this down at the bottom, that the worms won't run off into the sump as often as they have previously. So I think it's a great idea. Uh-oh, one of the worms that was in the uh, riser was like, no, bad idea. 
All right, let's get some paper to put in here. Okay, there we go. Got the base layer of paper and shredded dry paper, which I will put just a tiny bit in so that it's not terrible. And then this will become the new layer one. I'm going to reassemble things and you can look at them in the opposite order. Here's the uh, mortar tray that I was working in. You can see all of the little spring tails springing around here. Looks like I've only lost a couple of worms crawling out the bottom of the holes when I was working. I will go ahead and get those guys put back in. All right, here we are. I actually have six layers on it right now. I've got the one I just added right now that has that paper I put in there and the cardboard. And then we have all of these little layers that are ready to roll. The top one got a little bit of worm chow. This one got some mixed fruit. And then these little piggies, well, they got nothing. All right, guys, well, if you liked the video, I have an entire playlist of the tower that I will put right over here. And if you have already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video up here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.